and uh, welcome to this video on how to use the autopilot and hopefully the ILS and uh, land for the default Airbus A321 on Flight Simulator X. I've been playing this game for a little while now and learning how to get the autopilot and the ILS to work on this aircraft has been a voyage of discovery for me. I've uh, researched all sorts of articles all over the net about it and I figured the one way I was guaranteed to find out how to do it properly was to put up a video that purports to show you what I've learned and then get a load of experts jump onto it and say, ah no, see what you've done is you've done this wrong and you've done that wrong and what you need to do is to do it this way, which is fabulous. I'm, I'm very much up for learning better ways of doing this. Here's what I've learned how to do to fly this by the numbers to get this to work. Um, so here you can see I've got loaded the standard Airbus A321. My current location is set to uh, Plymouth, which is a small airport in the UK. I've set real uh, world weather, and the current time and season is just set to now. I'm going to go into the flight planner, and for choosing an airport, I will just keep that set as Plymouth, and I'll choose the active runway because I don't want to waste video time here by uh, driving along the taxiway and to choose an airport to go to I will fly to Jersey which is uh, just across the water not too far away nice short flight um, yep that'll do I'll select IFR now for me this is fairly important because when you fly IFR you're given great instructions by the guys on air traffic control and um, this is part of what will make the whole auto land thing a lot easier certainly for me to explain and certainly for you to experience the first time uh, so I'm flying IFR, I'll take low altitude airways uh, click find route which unsurprisingly will just be a direct uh, hook across the uh, water straight from Plymouth down to Jersey flying overhead Guernsey I believe my cruising altitude is uh, set to 5,000 feet, which I'll just leave as standard, and um, I will save that. I've already saved it before, but uh, I'll just save it again and say yes to move me to the departure airport. So now we're ready to go. Um, because of the vagaries of my recording system, I'm going to pause the video here and then start it up again when I have got the aircraft loaded at the departure runway. So here we are in the aircraft and uh, we're ready to go. First thing I suggest you do is to take a look at the map and we're going to go to the airport that we're heading for which is Jersey and with Jersey centred zoom in a little bit and with the airport selected, click on it and it will come up with the ILS details. So select that, click OK and it will give you the information for the ILS. In fact there are two here. This one showing is the ILS for uh, runway 9. The identifier is there, IJJ. Keep a note of that. The frequency we need to dial to get the uh, localizer is 110.9 and the actual heading of the runway is 86 degrees and this Morse identifier you see down here dot 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 da 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 dot da 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 is the beeping sound that some people call it on some of the videos I've seen that's transmitted by the localizer that identifies that localizer as being the ILS for runway 9 at Jersey and we'll see a bit more about that a bit later on but okay we've got the information we needed so to help make this easier to follow I'm going to uh, select the 2D cockpit um, while I set up a few bits and pieces prior to taking off so the information that we just uh, talked about Jersey is the first thing I'm going to enter. So I'll 
bring up the wireless information and select nav1. Now on nav1 I will enter the frequency for the localizer which is 110.9. So 110.9 and then move the frequency to active. I'm going to enter exactly the same frequency into nav2 as well. Uh, the reason for that might become clear a bit later on. You don't actually have to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, I'll show you why a bit later. OK, so they're both in there now. That's fine. I'm also going to set the call button for nav1 active. What that means is that when we get in range of the localizer, it will start that beeping sound or transmitting the Morse code for ILS for runway 9, which is IJJ. So with all that done, just pop that up a little bit and then get easy access to hide the radio stuff. With that done, I'm going to dial in the speed for the uh, course into the autopilot information. I'm going to choose a speed of 320 knots. Uh, the heading, I'm going to set the runway heading for now, which is 306. Um, I'll get instructions on changing that a bit later from our traffic. I think we go backwards and forwards here. The course, I'm going to set to the runway heading at Jersey. Now, I don't need to do this. This is just a reminder for me uh, of what the runway heading is when I get to my destination. So I'm doing as much work up front so I don't have to do a whole lot of running around and, and dashing when I get near touchdown at the other end. Uh, for the altitude I'm going to click that over to the 1000 setting and dial in 5000 feet as the altitude that we're going to run at. That's got most of that information set up. Uh, we're all pretty good to go. Let's speak to air traffic. We need to do this because we filed an IFR flight plan and also it's going to make our work a lot easier when we take directions from air traffic. So, to Plymouth Tower and request clearance. Plymouth Tower, Airbus, Foxtrot, Mike, Sierra, Alpha, Bravo, IFR to Jersey, ready to copy. Airbus, Foxtrot, Mike, Sierra, Alpha, Bravo, is clear to Jersey, airport is filed. Fly runway heading, climb and maintain. 5,000. Departure frequency is 133.55 squawk 6621. Airbus, Foxtrot, Mike, Sierra, Alpha, Bravo. Clear to Jersey Airport as filed. Fly runway heading, climb and maintain 5,000. Departure on 133.55 squawk 6621. Airbus, Sierra, Alpha, Bravo. Read back correct. Contact ground on 118.15. So I'll request taxi IFR now. Plymouth Round, Airbus, Foxtrot, Mike, Sierra, Alpha, Bravo, ready to taxi IFR. Airbus, Foxtrot, Mike, Sierra, Alpha, Bravo, taxi to and hold short of runway 31. Contact tower at 118.15 one, one, when ready. Unfortunately, FSX doesn't seem to be intelligent enough to realise I'm already on runway 31, ready to go, so it makes me go through all of the uh, spiel as if I were taxiing out to the runway. So um, I just need to go through this. Taxi 2 and hold short runway 31. Airbus Sierra Alpha Bravo. Plymouth Tower, Airbus Foxtrot, Mike Sierra Alpha Bravo. Ready to go. Runway 31. IFR to Jersey. Airbus Foxtrot, Mike Sierra Alpha Bravo. Cleared for takeoff. Runway 31. Cleared for takeoff. Runway 31. Airbus, Foxtrot, Mike, Sierra, Alpha, Bravo. OK, so in a minute I'm going to get real busy as I uh, take off. Plymouth is a very short runway to be flying in Airbus 321. Um, so I'll be going max chat down the runway. Um, as soon as I lift off, I'll cut the throttles to half power, otherwise I, I overspeed. I'll then uh, attempt to engage the um, autopilot here and the auto throttle here and I need to engage the speed by clicking on the center of that button and the heading so I fly the runway heading out by clicking on the center of that knob 
And finally, to uh, make sure that I don't go beyond my altitude, I'll click on the centre of that one there. Whilst I'm doing all this, air traffic will be busy helping me with all sorts of instructions. So, uh, um, well, let's just see how we go. OK, so we're ready to go. And throttles at max. Take off the brakes. And off we go. Actually, now I come to think of it, I've no idea what the rotate speed is for an Airbus A321. I normally lift the wheel at about 120. Let's see how we do. OK, so we're up. I'll lift the gear. Autopilot on. Auto throttle on. Set the speed. Set the heading. Set the altitude. All seems to be going OK. receive those instructions from air traffic, I generally start the turn before acknowledging. Um, because this is such a huge turn around to 140, unless I do it in increments, the aircraft might decide to take the shortest route and, and fly to the right instead of to the left as instructed by ATC. So I'll start the turn, get it moving on that turn, and then I'll keep pulling it around until I've got 140 ensuring that we keep going around in the correct direction. See, I'm only heading 220 at the moment. If I dial in the new heading too soon, it's likely to, to flip around and turn in the opposite direction. There it is, 110. I'm going to try and turn the sound of the jet aircraft down. Because it's a bit loud. It's still a bit loud. Turning it all down a bit. Ah, OK, that's better. I'll just go to the 3D view for a minute. Lovely view of the Devon countryside. I'm using the uh, BFR scenery here. So, though we don't get much chance to enjoy it on this trip. There's a little bit. Okay, so I'm heading across the sea. I'll switch back to the 2D cockpit. Now, interestingly, coming across the MFD now, you'll see this purple line. This is our flight path. And believe it or not, because of the speed we've taken off and whatever, we're only just starting to come abreast of the airport that we took off from. But this course here is held in the um, GPS as well. And if I tap Shift 3, that brings up the GPS here. I'll zoom out until we can see the entire trip. There it is. So there's the flight already in. And I can engage the GPS, and I will in a while, uh, and follow that course. 
course direct to Jersey uh, when they give us clearance to uh, fly on our own navigation. Um, once they tell us uh, or give us new directions, I'll take us off uh, flying from GPS. I'll hit shift 3 again to close the screen now. I think shortly the uh, air traffic will give us a new direction, which um, Surprisingly, is going to take us along uh, what our flight path should be. They'll then tell us to resume our own navigation. I'll engage the GPS at that stage, and uh, the GPS will take us along for a, for a little while. But as you can see, with the auto throttle, throttle set, um, our speed, which we dialed in at 320, is correctly reflected here on the MFD, the multifunction display. Our heading set at 110, again you can see on the MFD that's the course we're flying. Uh, the course that's just the runway heading at Jersey when we get there. Our altitude should be set at 5000 and again here over on the MFD you can see that is the case. Occasionally uh, air traffic will give you uh, atmospheric pressure settings um, and when they do, you should change this here because that will um, affect the altitude reading that your aircraft is using. So, unless you and all other aircraft are using the correct atmospheric pressure, even though you might show you're at the right altitude, actually, you won't be. On Flight Simulator X, it's quite easy to do this. Whenever you get a new pressure reading, actually any time we're flying if you just press the letter B you can see updates and you may have noticed actually that our altitude over here changed a little bit based on the new atmospheric pressure. And so far apart from the takeoff where I did a little bit by hand everything at the moment is being flown by the autopilot. So there's our uh, permission. I generally dial in the heading and then acknowledge the instruction. Turn right heading 135, proceed on course. Airbus, Sierra, Alpha, Bravo. If you don't acknowledge the transmission, eventually they start to nag you. That gets a bit irritating. So it's settling into course 135 now. Airbus, Sierra, Alpha, Bravo. Contact Manchester Center on 118.775. Just acknowledge this from air traffic. Going to one one eight point seven seven five Airbus Sierra Alpha Bravo. I think when I contact Manchester, they just put me straight onto London. Let's see. Manchester Center Airbus Foxtrot Mike Sierra Alpha Bravo with you at five thousand. Airbus Foxtrot Mike Sierra Alpha Bravo to Manchester Center. Roger. Altimeter two nine nine five. Airbus Sierra Alpha Bravo. Yep, there we go, contact London Centre. So we'll do that. So with 2.99.6 we'll press B. See the pressure's changed here. The altitude will change as well. So, we're talking to right somebody right else now. I might recall earlier, I said we could resume our own navigation. So, I'm going to engage our GPS. And the first thing uh, I need to do to do that is to press this button to switch between nav and GPS. So, I've selected GPS. The next thing I need to do is I need to press this button here, which is the nav hold switch. Now, it's marked LOC, which is short for localizer, and we'll be using that later. But it also works with GPS, very confusing stuff. But once I tap LOC, it now engages with the GPS, and it will fly this purple line here, which is the direction that we need to head in. Again, this has all been done by the autopilot. There's there's no manual flying involved here uh, at all. So, it's uh, sit back 
have a nice cup of coffee, tea, whatever your poison is. This is as exciting as flying gets, apparently. Needless to say, we're going to get very, very busy when we come in uh, towards the landing. And as much as we can do before then to prepare is all for the good. One thing worthy of note here, the MFD uh, down here, you can see that according to the GPS we've got a little over 50 miles to go to get to our destination. Now generally when I'm about 25 miles out I will start slowing the aircraft down Maybe descending if it's appropriate. I mean, at the moment we're only at 5,000 feet, so I'm generally going to wait for instructions from air traffic before descending. Uh, but I'll certainly slow the aircraft down early because these buses take a long time to slow down. And uh, I like to be prepared well in advance so that uh, we don't have a, an emergency panic before we come into land. World Travel 39026 Heavy. worthy of note here on the MFD. The speed indicator here is indicative of the fact that we have engaged speed on the autopilot. Uh, the alt is uh, indicative of the fact that we've engaged the altimeter setting on the autopilot. And the low, unsurprisingly, um, is indicative of the fact we've engaged the localizer. Although this time, <coughs> It's the localizer for the GPS and not the localizer for uh, landing at the airport of Jersey, which we'll come on to later. Okay, that's us. So we'll turn right, heading 140. There's not a lot to it. I need to disengage the GPS, which automatically takes off the loc, which is fine. I then need to re-engage by dialing in the heading and pressing the button to uh, re-engage the heading on the autopilot. A confirmation here that we were uh, 62 miles northwest of the airport and um, we're using the runway 9 approach, which is the one we've set up earlier, which is great. We just had a message flash up on the screen that our altimeter was incorrectly set, so let's set the pressure correctly. There we go. You can see that's quite a big change there between where we were and what the new pressure is. So that's Airbus about next to 160 Bravo. feet. Speak to the fine people of Guernsey. Notice because we're not using the GPS anymore, we have no reading here for how far away we are from the airfields. We're now flying a heading that's been given to us by air traffic, and we're very much uh, working with information that they give us at this stage. Again on the MFD, notice that the loc indicator has gone out, and the heading indicator has come on, indicating that uh, we have got the heading working on the autopilot.
Interestingly, air traffic turned us on to heading 140, which was intended to keep us on the flight path, but uh, as you can see on the MFD here, we've got a crosswind, which is blowing us left. So air traffic is going to turn us right before turning us left in a minute to, to get us back on track. can't get to respond to our traffic now because of all the other chatter going on, so we're going to come off course for this a bit. Get in there quick. And there we go, he's bringing us back up to 140. to keep this going with so much chatter going on in between aircraft but um just try and get in there when we can. So so far again we're very much at the mercy of our traffic. We uh, have no information down here about the runway localizer. Um, we don't know how far away we are yet from the airport. Uh, there are ways we could find out, but for now let's just leave ourselves in the capable hands of, of our traffic and uh, fly accordingly. Nothing else that should help to prove that uh, flying IFR being directed by our traffic can make these journeys a lot simpler. OK, that's us. Let's go right to 150. I'm willing to bet I'm doing that the wrong way around, and uh, somebody please correct me uh, who knows better than I do. Now a lot happened there, as well as getting the uh, request to turn right to 180, you may have noticed that the MFD suddenly came alive and flicked over, and now we're getting the beeping noise. Uh, now that beeping noise is Jersey, identifying itself as IJJ, if you look on the MFD here, you'll see there's the identifier for Jersey, IJJ, so we don't need Morse code, or to understand Morse code in these aircraft, and underneath it's telling me that I'm 24 and a bit miles away from the localizer. So I'm going to drop the speed down to 150 miles an hour, which will be my uh, landing speed. I'll bring up the radio stack and turn off the call for NAV1, which means we won't have the Morse code beeping at us all the time now, which should be quite handy. So now we're starting to slow down, get ourselves uh, really uh, prepared for the landing phase. And while we're doing that, we're going to change this MFD from the ARC, which is currently got, to the ILS. I do that by twiddling this knob The reason I set both NAV1 and NAV2 to the same frequency is so that I only ended up with one arrow showing on here. You can actually have two, but I only wanted one to keep things simple. Another thing to note is that the reason I set the course on here is that is the blue line. This blue line is the course. 
So that's the direction that the runway is. And this direction is the direction that we're flying at the moment, i.e. 180. So we've got an instruction to descend to 1600. Let's do that. So back to the NFD, that's the uh, orientation of the runway there. This is our heading here, we're heading 180. So eventually we're going to uh, cross over an imaginary line that runs out the middle of the runway, which is way, way, way over there somewhere. And as we get close towards that imaginary line, this line up here will start moving toward us. And we'll then need to turn left to intercept that imaginary line coming out from the runway. And doing that, that's how we capture the localizer. That is the straight line that takes us in to the runway. So let's have a look. We're currently 18 and a half miles out. Our speed's at 220 and dropping. It's fine. Our instruction from air traffic. So the important stuff there is remain at 1600, which we will, and turn left heading 120, so we'll acknowledge by repeating back all the important information to our traffic. So we'll present here with tuning in Jersey Tower. And we'll Jersey contact tower, the tower. Altimeter is good. And we've got a nice straight forward pattern just to fly straight in. We go back down here to the MFD. Here's our direction, big arrow. And the blue line is the line projecting out from the, uh, the orientation for our runway nine at Jersey. So we're going to be turning left a little bit as we get towards the localizer. Now, to be able to do that, for it to grab onto the localizer, we need to enable it. So now should be on, and then we hit the localizer button. So now we've set the aircraft up to detect the localizer beam, and then lock onto it, and to fly it straight towards the runway. And to get ready for landing, I'll drop the gear. Just flick this open, make sure that the gear is down and locked, which it is. Then I'll start to drop the flaps. The flap indicator is over here. We go for full flaps for this landing in Jersey. So our speed is currently 150 knots, which is good. Our altitude is 1,600, which is bang on the money. That's all looking good. And now you'll notice the aircraft is banking toward the left. Now this banking towards the left might be the indication that it's starting to uh, track around to the right runway heading and trying to grab a hold of the localizer. You can check this if you want to by looking at the map, seeing how far out you are, but I'm just going to trust to air traffic here and see how we do. Notice our view out the window is about uh, as much use as a chocolate fire guard, which for an ILS landing is absolutely perfect, isn't it? See, we're turning left again here, according to our artificial horizon, and now this line's starting to come across. Look, when that line matches up with the line projecting through the runway, then we know that we're centering 
our approach to the airport. There we go. Now our current heading is 100. We're coming back around. As we remember, uh, the runway heading is 86 degrees. We want to land to land at Jersey. I'm also nine miles out from the airport now. So at this stage, I'm going to engage the glide slope. Now that means that not only will it take me straight into the runway, it actually will descend for me on a three degree glide slope into the airport. To do that, just touch on the APR button, APR for approach. When you do that, it will turn off the localizer and it turns on the approach. And to see how that works, we can use the ILS switch here. Now when we turn on ILS, you'll get a diamond down here. That diamond there is telling you how close you are to lining up with the runway. Now if it's in the middle, like it is here, that means you're in line with the centre of the runway. This diamond up here tells you whether you are above or below the glide slope. Where you want that to be is bang in the middle here. Now right now, because that is way above, it indicates that we are very low. And we are at only 1,600 feet, but we're continuing at 1,600 until we intercept the glide slope, and then we'll descend towards the runway. So that says clear to land on runway 9. And probably that's the last that we'll hear from air traffic now until we've actually touched down and um, they want to tell us where to taxi to. I'm going to arm the uh, speed brakes now, uh, shift forward slash, so that when we touch down, um, the spoilers will automatically come up to help slow the aircraft down. You can see the aircraft tilting downwards now, and that means that it's intercepted the glide slope, as you can see by the purple line here, it's bang in the middle, and now we're flying down towards the airfield. I'm going to change the view to uh, the three-dimensional view now, because we get a better look. And up ahead we can see uh, the lights of the uh, PAPI, Precision Approach Indicator. And at the moment I've got both white and red, meaning that I'm on the glide slope. If they're all red, it means I'm too low. If it's all white, it means I'm too high. If we've got halfy halfy, we're bang on the money. So, everything looking good so far. Quick squint outside the aircraft just to make sure. Yep, the wheels are down, the flaps are down. It's all looking good. Happily chuntering into land. I like to take this view when I'm coming in to touch down uh, because as I get closer toward the airport, I want to cut the auto throttle and the autopilot. If you don't, the aircraft will try and take off again. Now, as you can see right now, it's flying itself onto the runway. Which is fabulous. As soon as I get near touchdown, I'm going to cut the auto throttle and the autopilot. That will fly itself on. You hear it touch down. There you go. And now press and hold F2 because by doing that, you'll engage reverse thrust. And if needed, apply the brakes as well. Once you get to 40 miles an hour, you can let go of both the brakes and the reverse thrust. And uh, as advertised, air traffic are keen for you to get out of the way and off the runway, so let's try and oblige. So I'll stop the aircraft there, and that is how to do a takeoff, and then use 
autopilot to fly all the way to your destination and use the autopilot pretty much to bring you in for the landing as well. I hope it's been useful. I hope you might have picked up a couple of things from it. But please, more importantly, if you find stuff on there I'm doing wrong, I'm sure there's tons of it, let me know and, and let's share the joy of uh, trying to fly this stuff uh, and get as much enjoyment out of our hobby as we can. Thanks and uh, cheerio.